Oh hey, welcome to a touch designer tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at how to make art like just lines. So he does this cool thing where he takes the edge of one image and extends the pixels to the edge of the full image. So you get this nice picture, but then also these pretty lines. That's a good one with his hand, or a hand. I think this one's my favorite with all the different colors in the tiles. Definitely go check them out. So let's look at how to do that in Touch Designer. Um, also, this isn't like an introductory tutorial. I'm gonna leave some links in the descriptions to some videos if you need to learn like how to use Touch Designer. Uh, I'm gonna go kind of fast, but I'll try to narrate exactly what I'm doing. So we're gonna double click and just gonna pull up this menu. We'll click the noise, it's pretty typical operator to use. We're going to right click there. I'm going to use transform. And then, as is tradition, I'm going to end it with a null. Click this little blue circle so we can see what we're doing. Go to the noise parameter window. Uh, I'm going to make it as big as I can make it in the free version. And then I'm going to go back to the noise tab. Turn down the exponent turn off monochrome and then go to the transform operator go to the translate the x translate parameter we're going to move it over 0.5 and then where we finally get the effect we're looking for is in the extend drop down menu there's repeat which will just take the whole image and repeat it duh and then mirror of course uh, we'll take a look at this later too but the one we want is hold. And then that'll hold over the pixels from the edge of this image to the edge of the new image. And then we get that wonderful effect. And then we can play with some parameters here. We can change the period, which will make the lines smaller and more plentiful or larger and less plentiful. Uh, and then we can, this is, this is just if you want a still image and if you're, if this is all you want, then you can just click here and save image and then save it wherever you need. But I'm going to go a step further and go to the translate parameter, the Z translate and type ABS capital T I N E dot seconds. And it's going to go really fast if we do that. And I want it to go really slow. So I'm going to multiply it by 0.1 hit enter. And it starts moving it for us. And then if you wanted to save this, you could right click there, movie file out. And then this one will work, but I think sometimes I use this one. And then click this guy, type the name. And then it'll save it for you. I usually click this unique suffix and then it'll name it the same thing, but change the number every time you uh, save a new file. And then you just click this record and you wait for however long you want the file to be. And then you just click it again when you're done. Um, and speaking of movie file out, uh, you can also use a movie file in. And I'm going to take this away because it's a little distracting going to connect that to that and then you can don't even really need to see these you can just click this little circle and go away I'm instead of this dumb banana I'm going to use this video I took the other day on my cell phone uh, and you get this little warning it's you can ignore it it just again you can only go up to 1280 with a non-commercial key and this was shot on a cell phone so it's much higher than 1280 um, but you can still use it. it, you can just ignore it. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're going to add a transform. And then, again, click this little blue circle so we can see what we're doing. And then we're going to move it over 0.5. You can do it the other way too, it doesn't really matter. Just, you know, move it over some. And then extend hold. That's really nice, I like this. Uh, but what if, we don't want to move 
the whole video just to get it. Like, if, what if I just want to cut this in half and then extend, like, the right half over? Um, we have to do it a little bit differently. Uh, I still use this transform, but you put some stuff in between. So I'm going to right-click on this connection, and we're going to use a, where's it, crop. And then we're going to, let's see which way, yeah, let's use this side. We're going to change the crop left to 0.5, and then we have to use a second crop. And then we're going to turn on extend hold. And how did I do this? That's right. These things, they can sometimes go further than the actual slider, which is a little unintuitive, but you could just like click and hold this little menu and change it to whatever you want. Um, so yeah, to move it back over, you just you negatively crop it. Uh, don't understand it, but it works, you know? And then, so if we like, oh wow, am I even using this transform? Can I bypass it and just do the same thing? Yeah. So let's bypass this, and then we can see we're keeping our original image in place, but extending it. All right. Now let's look at a slightly more involved example so like you could either stop here and, and go play or you could stick around and I'm, I'm gonna do something a little crazy so we're gonna use a circle and I want to keep this in the background but let's let's have it be the like pretty version all right so we're gonna use a circle and then again gonna make it big as we can make it so we don't see the pixels and then we're gonna add a transform and then let's go ahead and hook it up to this so we can see what we're doing. And then we do our trick, right? Move it over 0.5, extend, hold, but doesn't do anything because there's, there is alpha, there's no alpha, there's, it's transparent, there's no background. Um, so it's not giving us what we need. Uh, but what we can do is go to the circle and then move it within its own parameter window and then we move it in the opposite direction of our transform, and that's when we get our effect. And to get a, not more pronounced, but to see the effect better, I guess, you can change the border width, and then turn down the fill alpha, and then we get lines, like we wanted. Uh, and black is a nice color, but it's a little boring right now. I'm going to make it this pretty pink. And I like to turn on polygon so then we can get some geometric shapes instead of just a circle. I'm going to make it I like triangles. And then you can rotate it and move the lines around. That's really nice. And here's where things get a little crazy. We're going to copy and paste this twice. I'm going to move this over. I'm going to double click and add a composite. We're going to put them all together. Right click and drag to select all of them. Take the top one, drag it into the composite. And from the operation menu, we're going to choose over. Uh, and then connect the composite to the transform. And we're going to go to the other circle operators and change the radii, radiuses. Um, and I'm just going to kind of do this semi arbitrarily uh, and just kind of watch the shapes instead of the parameters. Um, and then you think that you could select all of these and then move the rotate. And it, it does that. You can move all of them at the same time, but you only get to watch one. And so here's where things get a little involved. Got to go to comp, select slider. And then we're going to right click. It brings up this green menu. We're going to add, let me see. How did I do this before? That's what I thought. We're going to add a math. 
and then end it with a null, just in case. I'm gonna click this little plus star thing to activate it. Right click to select all of them. Right click and drag. And then we're gonna drag that onto rotate and choose chop reference. And so the reason we need this math is because if we activate the slider, it goes from zero to one. And in terms of degrees of rotation, that is not a lot. So we go to range and we change the two range to zero to 360. I guess it would make sense to go to like 359 because 360 and zero are the same thing, but it's, it's again, one degree is not a lot. You're probably not gonna notice it. Also, we have a limited range. So now, that was wild, we get to see the whole shape change. And then you can add sliders to the radius parameters to make them change size or have them rotate independently, adding their own sliders, or uh, you could do, hello, this guy again. And now it's going really slow, so we're gonna time it by a lot. And it'll just do it by itself. I guess that's the easier way, but I like doing it this way so that I can be in control. Okay. So that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching.